Hello Artlings, it is Friday, May the 8th. I am Mrs. Ballow, the art teacher at Shady Oak Primary School, and this is another edition of Mrs. Ballow's Messy Desk. I have mail? Oh, okay. Hmm. Let's read it. Dear Mrs. Ballow, I really like your art prompts, but I wish we could play with clay. Hmm. I don't have any though. What should I do? Signed, fake reader. I didn't really get a letter. However, I know that a lot of you guys have really enjoyed um, taking these prompts and running with them, but some of you are really missing using clay. Well, instead of going to the store, perhaps and buying some air dry clay or working with the earthenware clay that we have in the studio, I thought we should explore some clays, haha, <laughs> clays, that we could make at home. When I was a kid, we used to make Christmas ornaments all the time. And one of the things that we used to make our Christmas ornaments was something called salt dough. Salt dough is basically like uh, cookie dough, except you don't eat it because it's made with a lot of salt. And it uses stuff that you probably already have in your kitchen, flour, salt, water. I mixed up a batch the other day and I made this really cool relief tile. It's actually going to be an ornament. I'm gonna hang it from this little hole right here. Um, but it's two pieces that are joined together so that the butterfly on this one is raised. I had Mrs. Ballow's kid help me and we made some other uh, relief tiles. This is one that she made. It doesn't have a hole. Uh, it's not for hanging. And you can see that there's other things in it just besides the raised heart. So there's both things pressed into the, the dough and things added on top of it. We're gonna learn how to make those. I also found another recipe that uses glue, white glue, just regular school glue and lotion and oil and cornstarch. It was really weird but the results were awesome. I made another relief tile. See the star? And I added some things in it, and I also made this really rad crocodile alligator creature. Um, now, the doughs are not like regular clay, but if we don't have clay uh, in the art room, we might as well make our own, and that's what we're gonna do this week. Before we go into how to make the clays and how to work with them, let's learn a tiny, tiny bit about relief sculpture. I thought for this segment, we'd visit the other side of my office. Um, I have this super cool book and it's got some really good examples of uh, the different types of relief sculpture. So let's back up. What is relief sculpture? Is it like, oh, I'm so relieved. I don't have to do sculpture anymore. No, relief sculpture just basically means that there are either things above or below the main surface of a sculpture. In this case, the tiles that I made, the star, right, is raised above the main surface, and then there are things carved into the main surface to make it go into. So this type of sculpture has been around for a very long time. Uh, a great example of the lowest relief being there's not a whole lot of difference between the main surface and the things that are lowered and raised are ancient Egyptian carvings, where the Egyptians would carve into a flat piece of stone to make it look as if the surface had been um, raised or lowered. So that type of relief sculpture is called low relief. There's also a mid and a high relief. If you think to uh, cultures like ancient Greece and ancient Rome, the Parthenon, all the things that are decorated on some of these giant buildings, a lot of those are high relief. There's a lot of sticky outy stuff, right? It's very technical. So if you see sculpture, that has a surface and then maybe indentions in or things out of, that's a relief sculpture. A low relief means that there's not a whole lot of difference between the main surface and the things that are in and over. Mid relief and high relief, high relief meaning there's a big, big, big difference between the sticky outy parts, right, and the parts that are in the background. That's a little bit about relief sculpture. So let's look at some pictures. Here's a low relief example from ancient Egypt. Here's a mid-relief example. 
And here's a high relief example. Modern sculptors use this technique too. Uh, you can either carve into your surface or you can add on to your surface. In our case, we're going to be doing a little bit of both. I find that it's most effective and it's easier for me to process if I add things on. Uh, sculptors like Michelangelo and those who worked in the Renaissance who would take the block of marble and carve into it, um, that takes a whole lot more talent than I have, I think. So I like to do the opposite way, which most of you guys do when you sculpt. I think you add on, at least in my observations. So there's a little bit about relief sculpture. Well, that was cool. I hope you learned something. So for our projects this week, I will be showing you guys how to do basic relief sculptures by adding on to a tile. And I will also be showing you how to pull pieces out of clay to create an animal sculpture. In my case, it was the crocodile or alligator thing, whatever it was. But instead of taking pieces and putting them together by adding on, you take an entire piece of clay and pull the individual pieces out. That type of sculpture is the most uh, strong. The pieces aren't likely to fall off because they're part of the main body. So that's what we'll show you in the video. So here are your challenge instructions. Your challenge this week is to make some clay. I say clay, right? Because it's not really clay, it's dough. We're using kitchen stuff. But your challenge is to take one of the recipes that you find, either the ones that we have or ones that you find on the internet, and make dough and make something out of it. You can make the relief tiles, you can make the animals, or you can make something else. I don't care what you make. These are just ideas to get you started. After you make your creation, send me a picture. If you're a Shady Oak Artling, you know how to get in touch with me. Email, text, Facebook, Instagram, Flipgrid, all of it. Lions and tigers and bears, oh my, yes. Send me your pictures. If you're not a Shady Oak Artling, just make stuff. If you tag me at the Art and Makerspace, not hashtag the Art and Makerspace, at symbol the Art and Makerspace, I'll see it on social media. If you're done watching the video, get out of here. Go make some stuff. If you'd like to see me mix up some of the, the ingredients and then make some stuff, stick around because that's what we'll do. The rest of the video is divided up into two sections. The first section being projects that you can make with homemade dough, the tile reliefs, and then the pulled animal sculptures. The next section of the video is me mixing clay. And honestly, it's probably the funniest part of the video. Uh, there is definitely some do's and don'ts in that section. Um, but that's pretty much it. Watch to the end, watch to the middle, don't watch it all. Be done, goodbye. Either way, it was nice to see you again. Alright, so a relief sculpture looks kind of like this. This is another one that I did with cardboard and paper smache, which we'll be doing next week. But you can do the same thing with clay. Uh, the first thing you need to know how to do, though, is a super cool trick that a lot of really good cookie bakers know, which is how to roll clay or dough into an even thickness. And it's pretty simple. You get some cardboard and you put equal amounts of cardboard on either side of where you want to roll. I'm going to use two. When you grab your rolling pin, you make sure that the rolling pin can ride on the cardboard. And then you put your dough down in the middle. You see how it's super tall. But once I start to roll it, as soon as it gets as tall as the cardboard, it's going to stop. And now it's even thickness the whole way around. Now that's too thick for our clay. So I'm going to take one piece of cardboard off and we're going to make it one layer of cardboard thick. So I'm going to roll it out a little bit more. And as soon as it gets as tall as the cardboard, it won't squish anymore. And now I could use my cookie cutter to cut out a really nice even pull all the rest of the dough off. And it's a nice even thickness for me to be able to use 
in my relief. And I don't want to really, really want to move it because then I would make it all stretchy. But that's how you do it. All right, the kid and I both have little circular bases that we're going to build our relief sculptures on. Nowhere in anything that I read said that you needed to score and slip this kind of clay like you would do normal earthenware clay, but it's probably not a bad idea to get the places you're going to join just a little wet at least, so they kind of glue themselves together. Uh, so we'll just start going and then you can watch us do it really fast. Yeah, okay. Alright, I think we're done. Um, so a couple of notes real quick. If you want to hang your little tile, I'm going to move the camera. We're going to go for a ride. If you want to hang your tile, you need to poke holes in it right now. Otherwise, you won't be able to do that. Uh, mine's going to hang eh, right here. And this one is not going to hang, so there are no holes being poked in it. Yes, this is hard to do. Anyway, so there is one relief tile, and here is the... <laughs> this should be fun. Um, upside down, backwards, where is it? There it is. Perhaps? Maybe? All of it? Okay, there's the other. Next! I wanted to remind you of one more trick before we change to a different type of clay. Do you remember how um, I said I didn't want to move one of my things because it would stretch? Well, sometimes if your surface or your clay is too wet, then your clay or your dough will really stick to the table or your cardboard or your wax paper. I remembered a trick. All you need, dental floss. Not only is it good for flossing your teeth, but if you take a piece of dental floss and slide it up underneath your dough or clay, it takes it off of the cardboard or the surface uh, without getting it all stretchy. Now, don't floss your teeth with that afterward. Yeah, throw it away. This is cornstarch. I'm just gonna put some down on my working surface. Um, you want to get this stuff really, really, really pliable, and I'm not going to need all of it, so I'm going to put some of it back in my little bucket. And we're going to work with a little bit, and I'm going to show you how to sculpt an animal without adding on. A lot of you guys like to add pieces onto your creations, but really, it's better if you pull pieces and parts out of your creation instead of add them on, especially with dough like this, because you don't want the pieces to fall off. So the first thing you want to do is get the clay or the dough nice and soft. And this has got a really good consistency. I really like it. Um, and you're going to want to make a ball, probably, uh, or a lump. And I find that the easiest way to do that is to kind of squish it into a square. I kind of use little chompy mouths and I chomp in two directions, chomp, 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 turn it, chomp, 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 turn it, chomp, 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 turn it, until you kind of make a squarish thing. And then you can roll it out into a ball. So we're making an animal, right? I think I'm going to make, ooh, maybe a dog. Let's make a dog. How many legs does a dog have? Four, right? One, two, three, four. And a dog has a head and a tail. So maybe I'll start with kind of a long shape. I'm going to pull my arms and legs, or my legs and legs, my legs and legs, out of the shape. Now, it's not going to be perfect at the beginning. Are you kidding me? Um, but we'll start to form kind of this buffalo-looking dog eventually. And a dog has a tail. And a dog has a head. And this is not earthenware clay, so this is not going to work like normal clay, right? But now you kind of see this animal taking shape here. And I might 
make a little water in here and get it kind of pliable again. Um, maybe I should have made an alligator. It might have been easier. Maybe I will make an alligator. I think I changed my mind. I think I'm going to make an alligator. Because it just looks like an alligator. An alligator has a long tail. Same concept though. And I think what I'm finding with this clay is that perhaps it's not going to hold its own weight very well. It probably needs a flat bottom. But I've got kind of the shape of an alligator going here. And if I needed a reference photo, I would take it. We'll hit. So there you go. There is an alligator. Ish. With glue dough, which was a giant, giant mess. The dough we're gonna mix in this segment is salt dough. This is probably the easiest dough to work with. Uh, it is very forgiving and it's not very much of a mess. So if you had to pick one dough to make, it would be this one. Keep watching to watch me mix up some craziness outside. I had to come out of my room with my messy desk today because Mr. Ballo is in meetings all day and I talk really loud. So I'm outside. And the first thing we're going to try is salt dough. Super easy, three ingredients, right? Salt, flour, water. Should be very simple. All of these ingredients are also food safe, so you can use like regular wooden spoons, regular bowl, any of your kitchen supplies to do this. Some of the other clays that we're going to try are not made from all food safe ingredients, so we may have to get a little creative. But let's try this first one. All right, let me get my bowl and I'm going to start mixing. You need, for this recipe, one cup of salt, two cups of flour. So I will take my cup and I'm going to measure my salt. You do your dries first. Takes a lot of salt. There we go. And two cups of flour. And we're not baking, so it's not super important that we get it just right, but there's one. And let's see. I hope you can see what I'm doing. If not, it's okay. There's two. And there's a dog. All right, one, two. Put the top back on the flour. And then you need one cup of water. Now, if you don't want to use your measuring cup, there's another way to do it, but I'm gonna go ahead. Technically, I should be using this, but I have too much water, so I'm gonna use this. It's not gonna be that big of a deal this time. But people, if you're baking, this is a liquid cup. This is a dry cup, they're different. All right, so now I have, I don't know if you can see my mess, but there it is. And I'm gonna start mixing it. So I'm gonna start using my hands, because why not? Put this aside, and maybe I can bring it a little closer. It's starting to turn into dough. And it may need, depending on the humidity, which it's pretty humid outside today, so I may need to add a little bit more flour. It's feeling a little wet. So I think I probably will do that. It's a nice dough, but it's a little sticky. 
and it feels a little gooey. So I think I'm going to add a tiny bit more flour. Probably don't need any more salt, but I'm going to do tablespoons kind of flour. Just kind of put it in there until I think it feels right. I used to make this dough when I was a kid. We would make Christmas ornaments out of it. And it's got kind of a strange texture. Now you can also use it, I think, that's, I think I've got enough flour in there now. You can also use it as a Play-Doh and put some colors in it now. You could color it now. And some recipes, instead of the one cup of water, call for one cup or half a cup of water and half a cup of paint so that your clay or your dough is nice and white. Okay, this is a much better consistency. I'm gonna come over here. So, let me see if I can find my camera. If you guys can see this, it's kind of grainy, but it feels almost like bread dough. And so the more I knead it, since it's wheat flour, the more that it's gonna get gummy because it gets that gluten effect, right? You know, that's why you need pizza dough until your arms fall off so it can be nice and stretchy so that gluten activates. Still a tiny bit sticky, but now I can pretty much do anything I want to with this dough and then leave it to air dry and it will turn, you know, it's not, it's not bright white. Like if we look at the top of my salt compared with the dough, it's kind of off white, but it works and you can roll it out, you can use a cookie cutter. Um, it's not super great for sculpting things that are like big, large, and three-dimensional, but you can build tiles, and I think that's probably what I'm going to do with it, build kind of a relief type sculpture. So I will go inside and do that and take you with me. Now this cold porcelain dough, which is made from cornstarch, glue, and some other stuff, is something that I've never worked with before. I like it, but man, is it messy. You have to be very, very careful at which point you put your hands into the mix, as you'll see in the video. If this is the dough that you choose to use, make sure that you work with your parents because it's likely to get crazy messy. Protect your surfaces, protect your clothes, but it works really nice and the texture is very nice and it dries really nice. So there's a lot of pros to working with this dough. Okay, let's keep watching and you can see how messy it can actually get. Uh, hopefully you can hear me, I'm far away from the camera. The two different types of dough we'll be making uh, this time, one of them is made with completely food safe products, the other one is not. It's probably a good idea if you make the recipe that is not completely food safe, use stuff like recycled containers, uh, plastic utensils to make your recipe and that way you won't worry about contaminating uh, anything that you use in your kitchen. This bowl that I used yesterday is not a bowl that we use to make food in. Uh, so it doesn't matter if I use it. I also am going to use a giant knitting needle to stir with. Uh, hey, wow, I got big. Um, I wanted to show you something really close and there really is no happy medium. Sorry folks, it's either right here or it's way back there. Since we're using items that are not food safe, uh, you don't really want to use your measuring cups necessarily to measure out mm, glue. So a cool trick is if you have a clear plastic cup um, or one that's been recycled that you don't mind throwing in the garbage can. Uh, if you, and it's kind of hard to see because it's clear, I'll put my hand behind it. You see I've written half a cup and one cup on here. What I did was put some water in there. I measured out half a cup of water, I poured it in there, and then I marked it. So this is a liquid half cup and this is a uh, liquid whole cup. So you don't have to use your measuring cups uh, when you measure stuff like glue or hair conditioner or things that you never want to eat. Um, so do, ugh, if I drop it, do this, uh, and that way I'm going to use it to measure my glue here in a minute. Yeah, back here again. The magic of video. Yay. All right, the first ingredient is this is cornstarch, and I'm using a recipe from Kitchen Table Classroom. I like all of her stuff. And it's a recipe that you need uh, one and a half cups of cornstarch. I'm making half a recipe, so I'm going to use three quarter cup but for you guys who are making the whole recipe, it would be one and a half cups. And like we're not baking, so I'm just gonna eyeball it. I have a half and then a quarter cup here. And that's what I'm gonna use. And that looks pretty good. All right, and the next thing we're gonna use is the glue. 
and I'm going to use my handy dandy little cup here uh, to measure the glue. I The full recipe is one cup. I will be using half cup because I am only making half a recipe. And hopefully I've got half a cup of glue. And there you go. It's probably a little more. Yeah, tiny bit more. I can add more cornstarch if I need to. And then I'm going to use my plastic fork or plastic knife to be, hello kitty, you hear my kitty. Um, he is probably going to do that again. Uh, anyway, all right, so I'm going to take my glue and put it in there. And I will go rinse this out in a minute um, so it doesn't get all gluey. All right, so there's my glue, there's my cornstarch. I need a tablespoon of white vinegar, which a half recipe, for those of you who know, three, tables, three teaspoons is a tablespoon, that's one and a half teaspoons, or you could use three. This is food steak, so I'm using my regular measuring utensil for this one. And the vinegar is a preservative, y'all. It's to make sure that it doesn't spoil, go bad, get yucky. Uh, then they call for a teaspoon of baby, or teaspoon of lotion, and then a tablespoon of baby oil or almond oil or some kind of oil. Uh, I'm not measuring a teaspoon in these because this is not food safe. I'm going to use my hand um, and just kind of get the idea. So a teaspoon, y'all, <laughs> like that. Um, you measure with your own hand. This is a great uh, trick for you guys to learn, kind of eyeballing a measurement. So there's my hand, and it's a half teaspoon because I'm only using a half recipe for that. And then oil, one tablespoon of oil. I'm going to use coconut oil. Um, you can use any kind of oil you want. This is food safe. I'm using this. So it calls for a tablespoon. I'm going to use for a half because I'm using a half recipe. I will not put this back in the coconut oil because it is now touched my fingers. So I am done measuring. These will go away. And now it's time for me to mix. I'm going to use my giant knitting needle because I did not have a stick. I don't want to use a kitchen utensil again because it's not food safe. You could use a plastic spoon, plastic fork, go for it. I'm going to try my knitting needle for a hot minute. And then once it starts to goo up, then I'll just use my hands. So let's come see what it looks like. And through the magic of TV, there is it starting to work. And I'm going to mix it up as much as I can for a little bit. Um, and as soon as it starts to incorporate, I am going to use my hands. But before then, it's getting, it's getting kind of gloppy. There we go. Looks pretty nice. Looks pretty nice. Another tip, y'all. Um, if you have an extra cup, go ahead and instead of getting in and out of your food ingredients, you can just pre-pour a little bit into a cup and that way you won't have to go back and forth touching your food supplies. Just saying. All right, I don't know if you guys, <laughs> it's starting to turn into clay. I'm going to put a little bit of cornstarch in my hands and then I'm just going to go for it.
This is a salt dough that I made yesterday. And as you can see, it's dry pretty good. It's pretty solid. Um, and the pieces are holding together. This one as well. This one's nice and thick. It's pretty hard. Still a little wet. I could bake these a little bit if I wanted to. They're a little squishy, but they're pretty durable. I'm pretty pleased with that result. And the texture is quite interesting. I bet if I used more flour and less, or more flour to salt, like some recipes, oh, it's so blurry. Just kidding, can't see it. Um, I bet if I used a recipe that had more flour in it, which they had them out there, it might not be so grainy, but I like those overall. And this is what I did with the glue clay. I made some relief tiles uh, like I did with the salt dough to see how it worked and how it dried. These are still, I just made them today so they haven't dried at all. And then here's my dragon dinosaur creature thing. Uh, it's not dry at all yet either. I'm thinking it'll take a few days. But that's what I did and we'll see maybe next week how they all turn out. The struggle is real, y'all. I already cleaned up half the mess. So, not only is that covered in mess, but that's covered in mess, and that's covered in mess, and this is covered in mess. Well, actually, that's not too bad, but yeah, it's still messy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is what it's like to be a stay-at-home art teacher. Messy. My cat decided to help me clean up the kitchen. Hmm. I don't think he's very helpful. Mrs. Ballow was never here. It never happened. There was never a giant art mess in Mrs. Ballow's kitchen. You know who helped? The kitty. He totally cleaned it up. He's so tired, he had to take a nap in this box. Where you going, kitty? Tired of me taking your picture? He's like, I'm out of here. <laughs>